Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. So today I am doing a video that I haven't done in a little while and it's a what sold this month video. I don't post a whole lot of these because I don't know why actually. I really love watching these kinds of videos because hauls are really interesting, but what makes reselling it fun is making money. And so these videos I think are really helpful to see what actually sells and what didn't sell or what sold slowly, what sold quickly. So I wanted to come on here and share with everybody what my sales were like for February. I had a pretty good sales month, if I do say so myself, for a part-time reseller. So if you guys are new to my channel, I'm a part-time reseller on Poshmark and Mercari. I have a couple of listings on eBay, but I have found not a whole lot of good luck there. <laughs> I get a lot of scams and I get a whole lot of nothing. So I've posted a couple of high dollar items on eBay, but for the most part, I sell on Poshmark and Mercari. By the way, when I say I do this part time, I spend about, I would say 10 to 15 hours a week on reselling. You know, maybe I'll go thrifting three times a week at three hours. And then a lot of my time is spent sharing my closet and getting listings up. So I, I wouldn't say I put any more than 20 hours a week into this gig. So it can be successful and it doesn't have to be super time consuming either. I started this last March completely new. Um, I had some experience with reselling, but like not a whole lot. I wouldn't even say it was reselling. I would say it was more so like finding stuff around my house that I didn't use anymore and listing it. So that's kind of how I got my start into it. And I'm just like, full force in it like i love this so <laughs> this is what i made in february let's get on with it before we do though these kinds of videos don't get a whole lot of views for me so if you don't mind pressing the like button letting me know how your february sales were and also subscribing that would help my videos out a lot thank you so much especially with these videos that don't get a whole lot of views all right now we'll get into it so my sales for february were fourteen hundred dollars on the dot like no joke now that does include one return unfortunately and the total cost of my goods sold was 200 $78. Sorry, I don't know why I paused there. But I spent $270 on the inventory and I made a return of $1,400. So not too shabby if I do say so myself, especially for being my second source of income. But yes, I did have my very first return this month. I've had a couple of return requests. They have never been approved before. Uh, I totally disagreed with this return and Poshmark basically told me to F off and they <laughs> gave this girl a refund anyway. She sent me my thing back I'm not gonna say what it was but she sent me my item back and it was in the exact condition that I described so I'm a, I'm a little I'm a little irritated by that so that kind of sucked it was $36 but it is a little satisfying having my sales be $1,400 on the dot so whatever it is what it is so a question that I get from time to time is what are your thoughts on Poshmark versus Mercari I'll let you guys be the judge of that but on Mercari I made $121 before fees and on Poshmark I made $1,800 before fees so yeah needless to say uh, Poshmark is definitely the main breadwinner here and Mercari is just kind of like I'm gonna cross post because it's convenient and easy so I still do like posting to both because $120 is still $120 but I wouldn't say Mercari is anything that will be making me full-time money also, one other thing I want to say, I know $1,400 might seem low to some people. I know there are videos out there that are like, I made $10,000. Frankly, if they're making $10,000 and they're not sharing their cost of goods, it doesn't mean anything. They could be losing money. They could have sold 15 MacBooks at a loss. You know, like it just really totally depends on the inventory, how much you're spending, blah, blah, blah. So I would say usually, I don't spend more than $10 per item. It's very rare for me to spend more than $10 an item. In fact, if I divide out the number of items I sold by my cost of goods, each item ends up only being $5.45, so not too bad. And each item is bringing me in about $27. So just to give you guys an idea of my numbers there. But let's dive into what exactly sold. So. I'll go I'll start off with my best sales and go not into my worst sales because I always appreciate every sale, but like the sales that brought me less money, I guess. So one sale I had that I was really happy about was this Hatch Maternity Cardigan. I had it listed for $100 and the next day I got an offer for $65 and I accepted. This is definitely a Bolo brand that I had never heard of before, but 
it sells for a lot, it retails for a lot. A lot of their cardigans go for like three, four hundred dollars and it retains its value. So a lot of things might retail for that much, but they don't retain their value like Theory or Vince. But um, keep your eye out for Hatch. It is a great great brand. So after fees, I ended up getting $52 on that. The next really awesome sale I had was this Holding Horses Crushed Velvet Dress. I had this listed for $70. It sold for full price. And after Poshmark fees, I got $56. This was a pretty quick flip, especially for being anthropology. A lot of people say anthropology doesn't sell quickly for them or doesn't sell for a whole lot. I don't know if I got lucky with this dress or what, but I was happy to see it go for full price. And it was really cute. I kind of wanted them for myself, but anyway. The next one was this Reformation jumpsuit. This is actually an item that I paid up for. I paid $25 for this because it was more of a formal piece um, and it was just really fancy. So I thought I could get a lot for it. I accepted an offer on this for $74, even though I had to list it for $125, but I knew the profit would still be not bad. It had a lot of likes, but no offers. So that's why I took it. I got $59 out of it. So, you know, not too bad. I still doubled my money and it was a good sale. Reformation seems to be doing worse and worse for me. Like it gets kind of some likes, but I feel like it doesn't have the same hype it did like two, three years ago. So I'm a little bit more, like I wouldn't pay up for it as much anymore. The next thing that sold was a pair of Tory Birch flats. We all know from my Instagram picture, but I got these for $5. <laughs> I had them listed for a hundred. I accepted an offer for 65 and they sold for 52. Now you might be wondering why did I accept an offer for 65 when I had them listed for 100? And the reason why is because there were actually a lot of sold comps in that range. It was a little lower than what I wanted, but I didn't really want to hold out and see if I'd get a better offer because I was so happy with that anyway. So that's why I settled on an offer for 65. Still a great profit. The next thing that sold was a Savage X Fenty onesie. Um, I had this listed for 130. I got an offer for 100. And so I made $80 off of this. I could have definitely held out on this one and gotten like $20 more. But in the grand scheme of things, like I just, I would rather reinvest that money quickly back into my reselling business than hold out for $20 times the 20% for Poshmark fees. So like, what, $16 difference? You know, it's just not worth it to me. So I accepted the offer and that was a great, great sale. It was new with tags. I could not believe I found that. Um, and it's sold out everywhere. So great, great flip. The next one was Good American Jeans. Again, another picture I posted on Instagram. Um, I had these listed for 80, accepted an offer for 55 and I got $44. So $55 was actually a pretty reasonable offer. I looked at recent solds and that seemed to be within the range, maybe like $5 lower. But again, I'm not gonna nickel and dime people over $5, so I accepted that. And then the other sale I had that I was really happy with and the last one I'll talk about was a pair of Doc Martin Mary Janes. These sold the next day. I got these listed for $100, accepted an offer for 70 and I made 56. So I've sold a pair of Doc Martens very similar to these in the past, had the exact same offer in the exact same amount of time. So I was happy with that. I, I figured they would sell for that much, but I posted them high just in case, just in case someone was willing to pay $100. So I do that a lot where I list high and I'll accept a little bit, you know, lower, but hopefully that makes sense. Like I don't list low, I list 20 to $30 higher so he can send pretty aggressive offers. Sometimes, not always. Okay, moving on to the sales that were kind of like, meh. So this one I thought was funny. This was a holding horses top um, that I had listed for 30. <laughs> I got an offer for 12 because I was just getting no movement on this and I accepted because I bought it at the bins, which is you pay by the pound. So I think I paid like a dollar for this probably. Um, and so I ended up still making $9. $9 is still $9, so I'll take it. It's just funny to me how these two brands, one sold for 70 full price and one I could barely pay someone to take off my hands, um, sold for such a different amount. So it really goes to show like brand, does matter, but style matters too. So, you know, you just gotta you just gotta know what's good within each brand. The next one was a Lululemon tank. I got this at the bins for a dollar, had it listed for 25, accepted an offer for 12, made $9. Again, since it was a bins find, I didn't really care, but this had a stain on it that I thought I could get out and I 
didn't end up getting it out, it wouldn't come out. So that kind of sucked. Sometimes buying things that are stained, you're taking a chance on if you can get the stain out or not. And that one I could not, but again, you know, I'll take $8 for a bins find. Um, this next one was an Athleta dress, had it listed for 20, accepted an offer for 12, made nine again. This was something I got from the next door, um, like pickup I did during the beginning of the pandemic. And so it was free to me. I was so sick and tired of sharing that dress. I just wanted it gone. To be honest, there's a lot of things in my closet that I'm like, ugh, I really don't like looking at that. <laughs> and that was one of them. So I was happy to part with that for $9. And the next one's kind of similar. It was a mirror shirt. I got it at the bins for probably a dollar. I only made $5 on it because I sent an offer for $10 with discounted shipping. This was one of those like rookie mistakes that I made. I bought it because I thought it looked cool. And like, yeah, it's cool that I made $4, but like how many hours did I spend sharing that one t-shirt only to make $4 on it? So I've learned from my mistake. I don't really buy no name brands anymore like this just because they look cool because I found they really don't sell for me. <laughs> and then the next thing, which I was actually really happy about was this Brandy Melville shirt. Got it at the bins for a dollar and I, Got an offer on Mercari for $15 and I made nine off of it. But this sold within like two days and it was a bins find. And I was happy about this because that whole bins haul was $10. So this paid for that entire haul and it flipped quickly. So even though it was $9, it was worth it. So some things might be worth it depending on how long they're in your closet for. And some things might not be because you also have to think about the time it takes to share that item. So those are my sales for february i hope you guys found this video helpful give me a thumbs up because it lets me know that you want more of these videos in the future and let me know down below how are your sales again for february i'm really curious this was my best month in a while thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys next time bye